May the blessing of the name of the Lord be given to us today. Amen. I'd like to thank choir for, and the praise team for the powerful praise and choral anthem. And I believe that that's the sound and praises that, res- that resound from our hearts. Amen. Uh, today we're going to continue the third lesson in the short series, Creation and Recreation. The title for the message is Blessing of the Land and Seed. We read Genesis chapter 1, verses 19 through 13, uh, chapter ni- verses 9 through 13. And on this third day of God's creation, God created, God gathered the waters to one place and let the dry land appear. And then the second thing he did, he made the earth sprout vegetation. Namely, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruits after their kind with seed in them. The emphasis is they have seed. And this took place upon the waters below. If you can remember, if you are here for the first two of this series, the first two sermons, uh, last week we talked about God creating the expanse and Dividing the waters above the expanse and waters below the expanse. Now he's working on the waters below the expanse. And you should understand why he's leaving the waters above. uh, Because it's work that is accomplished, that is done in heaven already. But now he's narrowing in on the, the work of creation and redemption here. And his work is on the waters below. And he separates the waters to one side and lets the dry land appear. And God's approval of his work, meaning uh, God saying, seeing his creation and saying it is good, did not happen on the second day. However, it seems like it is being delayed until this third day after God finishes working on the waters to separate the waters, even the waters below. After he separates the waters, then he says, it was good. It is good. And then there's a second thing that he does on this day. So on this day, God does two things. On the first day, he did one thing. Second day, he did one thing. On the third day, he does two things. As if He's finishing up the work from the second day. And then he creates vegetations. Two things he did on the third day. Same thing. On the fourth day, he did one thing. On the fifth day, he did one thing. On the sixth day, he he does two things. One, one, two. One, one, two. Understand? We'll talk about that when we get to the sixth day later. But... Here, God says it is good after he separates the waters and the dry land. And then he says it is good one more time after he creates the vegetations to come up on the dry land, on the land. Right? So it is as if we, we talked about last time, the second day foreshadows the time in the history of redemption, more specifically, the time of Noah, Noah's flood. It is, it is as if after the flood, the waters dry up. And God allows Noah and his family to come out to the dry land. And it was good. The new heaven and earth, the new era has begun. Likewise, every time God says it is good, a new thing be- can begin. So, Let us think about this more specifically about how how this second day of a third day of creation foreshadows his work of not only of creation but of redemption and salvation, and how Jesus fulfills it when he comes on this earth, and how John, the Gospel of John, presents it. First, waters were gathered and the dry land appeared. This finishes the three day separations. So the, three days, the first three days of creation is like 
making the framework. And the focus here is God putting things in order from chaos. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, we saw that it was chaotic. It was, there was confusion, and darkness, and void. But from there, God creates, not only creates from nothing to something, but he puts everything in its own place where it should be. And I pray that God will do that work of creation in our life. Put everything where it should be. Put everything in organized, organized form according to His order. And then through the fourth, fourth day, fifth day, and sixth days, God puts in what belongs to that space and time. But here, through the three days, God creates an environment upon which, in which living things can live in which mankind can survive. And through these separations, God created time and space. We can see that in the first verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, speaking of time, start of time, God created space, heavens and earth. So God creates Time and space puts everything in order. And then today we see the separation between land and the sea, land and water. Drying up of, of water or moving of the water to let the dry land appear. This event took place also in the history of redemption in the Bible. Can you think of at least two? events where waters were moved to have the dry land appear. Noah's time, right? right? We have been studying uh, on, on Wednesdays and last week also, uh, when the, after the flood, God, let, God allowed the waters to dry up, to abate, and the dry land appeared. And that signified the end of God's judgment. That signified salvation work is finished. It, the dove bringing back an olive leaf was a sign of hope that there, was, there appeared land that can receive the seed, sprout forth, and bear fruit. It foreshadows the time in the future, in the history of redemption, where there will be soil of the heart that will be available to receive the seed. Genesis chapter 8, verse 11, the dove came to him toward evening, and behold, in her beak was a freshly picked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters, water was abated from the earth. And then verse 13, Genesis eight thirteen, we've been studying this on Wednesdays. Now it came about in the 601st year, in the first month, on the first of the month, the water was dried up from the earth. Then Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the surface of the ground was dried up. And so if the waters represent the, the judgment of God, and also waters we have learned represent, this kind of water represent the sinfulness Corruption, the influences of the world. For the water to abate, move away, and let the dry land appear, according to Matthew chapter 13, Luke chapter 18, Jesus refers to that land or the soil as the heart of the people. And so this speaks about the influences of the, of the world, the sinfulness, moving away. God clearing all that away from our life and our hearts so that our heart, the soil of our heart, our heart is ready to receive the seed. It's ready to receive the seed and when the seed lands on that land, on that soil, it will sprout forth, become a tree, and bear fruit. Luke chapter 8 verse 11 tells us, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Matthew 13, 23 and 24, I'll read it for you. 
Matthew 13, 23 and 24. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it. So may our hearts be ready. May the, the blessing of land appearing be given to all of us in year 2023. Is your life, is your heart ready to receive the seed now? Have we become the good soil? It takes a while. Noah had to wait. God had to wait. Noah's, Noah floating on the ark over the surface of the waters is like God in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. His spirit hovering over the surface of the deep because there is no place to land. Because there it's covered with sea. Maybe God was doing that. The Holy Spirit, the Word of God was hovering over the surface of our hearts until today. But may this year, may God be able to find a piece of land, water moving away, and the land where His seed can finally land. Jesus came to this world, and He said, the Son of Man has no place to lay His head. Right? It's not because He was sleepy that He wanted to lie down and sleep. What is Jesus, is Jesus saying? Just like God's Spirit did not have a place to land, and He had to hover over the surface of the deep, Jesus is saying, I came to this world. There is no heart that is open to receive me. The Word of God is seed that lands on the soil, which is the heart of the people. But we can look at it as the seed is Jesus, who is coming down from heaven to this earth, to the people of this earth. And is that seed going to be received or not? Today, is my heart ready to, is your heart ready to receive that seed? And so that's the blessing of the land. Blessing of the land is our heart being ready. God moving away all the temptations and our sinfulness, our sins, washing them away so that the dry land would appear. Also in the wilderness, waters moved away and the dry land appeared. Where? Which sea? Blue sea? The Red Sea. Yeah? Agree? <laughs> At the Red Sea, God moved the waters away and the Bible says, Exodus chapter 14, the land was dry. That opening of the waters, that moving of the waters, separation between water and the land, separated the people who will be saved versus people who will perish in the waters. It separated the Israelites and Pharaoh's army. There was another time when the waters were divided in the wilderness, the Jordan River. Same thing happened. God stopped the waters and the waters dried up so that the people of Israel can cross over. The separation of water and land at Jordan River separated the people who would enter into the land, the blessed land of Canaan, restoration of the Garden of Eden versus those who would perish in the wilderness. Who are we? Let us pray that God will give us the blessing of the land so that we can cross over the waters and come into the land that God has promised us. Let us pray for the blessing of God's, God's blessing of the land so that our hearts can open up. The waters will move away. The waters of corruption and sin will move away from our life finally. The waters of sickness and worries and concerns will move away. Amen? And the dry land up here. There is hope of life now. Jesus came. See, see, all these people who received the blessing of the land had to cross over the waters. Noah, God said to God came to Noah and he said, I want you to make an ark. So that you can cross over. 
What? Cars over a So Noah got into an ark and his family got into the ark and crossed over the waters and landed on the Mount Ararat, on the dry land. God called Abraham. God called Abraham. Abraham, in response to God's calling, crossed over the river Euphrates to come into the land that God led him to, the blessed land, the promised land. God called Moses, even when he was born, Moses crossed over the rivers, Nile River, as a baby. But also through Moses, Israel crossed over the Red Sea and the Jordan River to come into the land. See, the blessing of the seed and the blessing of the land. I will explain a bit more later, but seed represents a seed. The word seed in Hebrew is zera. Right? Everybody say Zera. Not zero, but Zera. Zera. Zera is referring to plant seed or human seed. Right? It is a word or it is referring to something that contains life. Seed usually has a, a hard covering to protect life. What seed does is seed carries life and delivers life to where it's supposed to be. Okay? And so seed also means descendants, offspring, or son. Here is where we read uh, plants bearing seed, trees with seed in them. This word seed, zera, appears for the first time in the Bible in this passage. Next time it appears, when it is when God promises in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I will send the seed of the woman, referring to the Messiah. Okay? So Zerah is a very important topic and word in the Bible because it's, ref- it's a word or it's a concept referring to the Messiah to Jesus Christ. And so every time God finds people with seed, who are the people with seed? People who have the the word of God, who have the covenant of God, who have the life of God. He leads them. He always tells them, I will lead you to a land. I will give you a land. He's promising you and me today a land also. Right? Right? No? God promised Abraham, I will give you seed, many seed, many offspring, and I will lead you into the land. Two things, seed and the land. God is promising us the same thing. I'll give you the seed of God's word. I will make you God's offspring, God's sons, seed, and I will lead you to the land. Anybody know which land we're supposed to go to? What What land? The new heavens and the earth, the new Jerusalem, that's the new land that God is leading to and promising us. And so that's the blessing of the land that God is leading us to. Genesis 2.8, the Lord planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. That's what he wants to do with us. There's a land, blessed land. And he wants to bring his son, the seed, into the land. It's the the, the blessing of the land, God leading us to our land, promised land. These are all looking hopes and, and looking forward to the restoration of the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. God spoke to Abraham also. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I have given this land from the river of Egypt as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. Jesus also came and gave parables of farming. Jesus Jesus is the seed that came. His word is the seed. And as I shared on the first day of this year, Jesus also said, let us cross over. 
Get on this boat, let us cross over this water. So that we can end up in the land where, we, we, where God wants us to be. Year 2023, once again, may we cross over the waters. So that we can land in the place. We can finally come to the land that God has promised us. Amen? Secondly, let us think about seed. Plants yielding seed after their kind and trees bearing fruit with seed in them. The blessing of the land leads us to the blessing of the seed. Once the land is prepared, it is ready to receive the blessing of the seed. So have you received the blessing of the land? Amen? If not, let us pray. God, give, give me the blessing of the land. In my heart, in my livelihood, and furthermore, in the end. But the blessing of the land comes with the blessing of the seed. Once the land is prepared, what's it going to do? It needs to receive the seed to produce. It needs to receive the people of God, the seed of God to live in. The vegetation is of two kinds that today's passage spoke about. First, plants producing seed. And second, fruit trees whose fruit had seed in them. So once again, this word zera, I explained already, is a concept that contains life. And when a tree, how does tree reproduce? Seed, thank you. How do men reproduce mankind? Seed. How do trees, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Uh, disseminate uh, fruits fruits drop what are in the fruits what's in the fruit seed in the fruit right and seed is it lands on the on the ground and after a while it sprouts forth and makes another tree that is just like the mother tree or father tree right in that that process is how God makes these trees everlasting, eternal, continue on. And so you have the, the original tree, bear the fruit, seed drops, grows another tree, and that tree bears fruit, fruit drops, grows another tree. What do you call that? Tree after tree after tree after tree. That's called family tree. <laughs> Family tree referring to genealogy. So this concept of zera is very closely related to the concept of toledot in the Bible. Do you know what toledot means? We should, right? Toledot is generations of mankind. That's why the blessing of the seed is important. You and I receive the seed from our parents. And we are living our lives. One of the main things as living beings, whether we are human beings or animals, one of our main focus and goals is to make another kind like us so that they can continue on. God's purpose here is similar, but what is in that seed? What kind of seed? The seed of God's word and truth. The seed of God's genealogy may continue on. And so the blessing of the seed is partly, we can think of it in two ways. We receive the seed and we become the seed. Because in the Bible, trees also represent people. Isaiah 5, 7, chapter 5, verse 7. i read it for you. Isaiah 5, 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So the house of Israel is referring to the nation of Israel. Nation refers to the people of Israel. God is re- comparing the people of Israel to the vineyard of the Lord. What's in the vineyard? There are many vines. What are vines? Grape trees, right? 
So God is comparing Israelites or God's people to grape trees, vines. Thus he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed for righteousness, but behold, a cry of distress. Psalm 80, verses 8 and 9. Psalm chapter 80, verses 8 and 9. You removed the vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. See, God is using botanical terms to refer to God's work of how he treats his people. He cleared the ground before it, and it took deep root and filled the land. God is, this psalmist is not talking about how God was a botanist or, or farmer. God, he's talking about how God moved the nations and saved nations. There are trees that bear fruit, meaning that have seed, and then trees that do not bear fruit, meaning that do not have the seed. When Jesus came to this earth, we know his parables. We know the incidents that took place, especially with fig trees. Fig trees represent, symbolize Israel. Jesus came to the fig tree seeking for fruit. There was no fruit. Jesus cursed it, and that fig tree never had fruit ever again. Matthew 21, verse 19. Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. Jesus also gave a parable of a fig tree planted in a vineyard. The farmer gave the fertilizer, let, the, let it have the sun bathe, and receive the sun and everything. It still did not produce fruit. Let us ask ourselves and reflect upon our life. Do I, am I a tree with fruit, with seed in them? Or am I a tree without fruit? Let us pray. This year, God will bless us with seed in us so that we may be fruitful. Zion Church is very fruitful. Amen? Spiritually and physically. How many babies are coming soon? That's a blessing. Somebody heard about that and said, wow, that's how you guys evangelize, huh? And we said, yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? I think there is one coming out as we speak right now. And we have, we have many more coming. What a blessing. And I believe and I pray that is representative of the spiritual births that will take place this year in Zion Church. Amen? What is, uh, not referring to babies now, referring to real fruits. What is fruit good for? I already mentioned one purpose, genealogy, to continue on the generations. That's what seed and fruit is for. Another way the fruit is good for us, food. We can eat food, especially for Adam and Eve. Back in the Garden of Eden, I don't think there was uh, meat eating. I'm not promoting veganism or veg vegetarianism. But back then, fruit was what God told Adam and Eve to eat, right? Also vegetations, vegetables. I cannot say I'm thankful for the fall, but uh, <laughs> anyway, they had vegetables and fruits to eat. But we're not talking about just physical fruits here. Adam was given, Adam and Eve were given all these different kinds of trees and their fruits to eat. And eventually they were to eat, they were supposed to eat from which tree? Tree of life. And that is called the fruit of life. But they ate, they were not to eat from one tree that is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 16 tells us, She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Which one? Who? She. Who is she? She is referring to wisdom. Okay? Some people call it lady wisdom. But wisdom in, in Hebrew or Greek is in the female form. So that's why when you use a pronoun, it's referring to it as she. Okay? Wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Remember when Eve was 
about to take the tree, uh, take the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It looked good for food, good to the eyes, and desirable to make one wise. But wrong. She was mistaken. It's the tree of life that gives you true wisdom. This is fake wisdom that will lead you to death. But here, she is a tree of life. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who hold her fast. May we receive the blessing of this fruit. May we become happy because of this fruit. Verse 19, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, He established the heavens. So, what is this wisdom? It says, The Lord made the heavens and the earth with this wisdom. What is that? It's the Word of God. It's the Word that God created with. God created the heavens and the earth through His Word. And that is referred to as the wisdom. So, we need to partake of. We need to make this our food. And that's another blessing of the seed. And after, become, after taking, receiving the seed, then we need, we need to become the tree or branches that will bear the fruit for many more to eat. And what is that fruit? Proverbs also tells us, I think it's chapter 18, the words that come out of our mouth is the fruit, the word. So how fruitful are you and what kind of fruits are we bearing today? John chapter 4, verses 32 through 34. John chapter 4, 32 through 34. This is when Jesus, after Jesus met the Samaritan woman. And while Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, the disciples had gone down to town to buy some food, right? Because he was hungry. And here they came back. He said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, No one brought him any, anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Who, who, who gave him the fruit or the food? Who gave him the food? It's the Samaritan woman's faith that became food to Jesus. And that's his work, and that's to accomplish God's will. May we, may our, the fruit of our lips, may the fruit of our life and, and acts become food for our, our God, become beautiful fruit. Jesus came seeking for that fruit. May Zion Church be the church that can say, not only do we have beautiful leaves, but we also have fruits for the Lord to come and take for His glory. And I sincerely pray and bless you in the name of the Lord that all of Zion Church members and families will become fruitful spiritually and physically in starting from this year. Not only in this year, but starting from today. Amen? Lastly, third, then now let us think about Land, seed, tree, and fruit in the Gospel of John. Let us turn to John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Here, he's, he's going straight at this. He says, I am the tree. I am the true vine. The vine that gives life. He explains in many other passages, drink this Drink this blood, this is my, this, this, drink this wine, this is my blood. Right? You eat my flesh and drink my blood, then you will have eternal life. Right? And so this wine comes from the vine. And he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruit. Which branch should we be? Let us pray that we are the branches that have the fruit. 
and God will prune it and clean it so that we can, bear, we can be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. See, when we receive that word, that wisdom, we are cleansed. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen? May we be the branches that are grafted on to Jesus. Jesus is the tree of life. Uh, we, we do have Bible study today. And if, we're going to talk a little bit more about that tree of life today. So, uh, it's your choice whether you're going to come to the Bible study. But Jesus is a tree of life. We are the branches. What do the branches have to do to bear fruit? Any scientists or botanists or anybody who knows? Farmer? What do the branches have to do in order to bear fruit? As far as I know, I'm not any of those. No, I'm not a farmer. As far as I know, branch just need, needs to stay on the tree. <laughs> And receive what the tree gives you. The tree will, will suck up all the nutrients through the roots and send it up through the trunk and give it to the branches. As long as the branch receives the nutrients, the water, and receive enough sun, then it will bear fruit. We are the branches. The only thing we need to ask ourselves is, am I attached properly to the tree of life, to Jesus Christ? And, or am I broken off? Am I receiving the nutrients? John chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat, which is also seed, grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But, if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus told us that he who is the seed that came to this earth will die so that we can bear fruit, so that we can, be, we can grow up, so that we can become the, the children, the generations that will continue. Jesus compared himself to the vine, to manna, food and drink, bread and and wine to tell us that his word needs to be we need to absorb we need to take in his seed his word as food in order for us to grow and for us to bear fruit but if we are still covered with water that cannot happen so let us pray that God will make move the waters away so that we can become the dry land and receive the seed and then we'll become the tree that bears fruit. How many times? How many times the fruit? 100 times, 60 times, 30 times. May that literally and spiritually come true in our life in Zion Church. Now as conclusion, let us be trees bearing fruit with seed in them after our own kind. Last week, we studied, uh, we concluded with uh, natural science, how clouds are formed and rain comes. Do you remember? Okay, this week, we'll talk about uh, another part of science, how plant grows and bears fruit. In order for plant or tree, or in order for the seed to grow, uh, and bear fruit. What are the necessary things? What do they need? Soil, sunlight, and water. Okay, three things. What did God create on the first day? Light, 
What did God provide on the second day? Separation, but of waters. On the third day, soil, the land. God provided all that is needed for the plant to be fruitful. Same thing, fourth day to the sixth day. Here, on the third day, it's the, the tree that should bear fruit. On the sixth day, it's the man that should be fruitful. Right? Same thing. But here, God provides us. Jesus came, and he became the light. He said, I'll give you the waters. You come and believe, receive my word, I'll give you eternal water. Referring to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And Jesus said, now you come to me, I'll be the cultivator. Remember, in Genesis chapter 2, there was land. The land was barren. There was no one to cultivate it. That's why God created Adam to cultivate the ground. Jesus, God sent Jesus to cultivate the ground, the hearts of the people. Jesus came to do that through the cross. Jesus prepared and provided all the, all the necessities for us to be able to bear fruit. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. May that blessing be given to us. May, our, may we be the trees planted by the streams of water, streams of God's blessings. The word of God is flowing out, like from Ezekiel's temple, the water of life. And our, our founding pastor said, there's enough water flowing by but only what you fetch becomes yours. How many times are you going to come to the stream of water and fetch the water? That becomes yours. There's a bounty full of water just flowing by. How much of that water are you going to partake and make yours this year? Here, this tree is greedy. He, he doesn't have to go over to the stream of water to fetch it. He says, I'm going to live here, planted by the streams of water, and continuing to receive the blessing. I pray that will be us. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 8. For he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when, heat com when the heat comes. Even when everybody becomes dark, even when every, the whole world loses faith, this tree will not lose faith. This tree will not become dark. This tree will not be tempted by the, by the influences of the world because its roots are extending into the stream. Will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought or cease to yield fruit. Lastly, Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. Revelation 22, 1 and 2. Then he showed, uh, he showed me a river of the water of life. This is in the New Jerusalem, new heaven and earth. He, he showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of his street. On either side of the river was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. May Zion Church be full of these trees of life, planted by the waters of God's blessings and His Word. Back to our main passage, it says, Trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind. Seed in them, meaning it has power of the word. Can we say we are trees with seed in us? Are you trees with the seed of God's word and power in you? Amen. That means 
it is possible to reproduce. That means we are able to evangelize. And then it says, according to their types, their own kind. Min uh, is the Hebrew word for kind or type. Min, M-I-N. Literally, it means from. The origin of which, from. In the history of redemption, history in the Bible, we see people the seeds coming according to their kind. From Adam came Cain and Abel, two different kinds. God saw already which is from which kind. Esau and Jacob, Ishmael and Isaac, and so on, according to their kind. Which kind do you belong to? What we, the first question in this conclusion was, are we trees with seed in us? Of course. But what kind of seed? Where is that seed from? And Jesus explains in John chapter 8, verse 44. John 8, 44. You are of your father. He's speaking of your origin. Min, where you're from. What kind of tree you are. He says, you are of your father, the devil. And... You want to do the desires of your father, of course. Because he's from, he has that seed. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. May we not be of that kind. May, we, may Jesus say, you are of your father, God. Amen? Are you? Are you of your father, God? So, when your kids, when my kids cause trouble, we have to remember, that kid is from me. <laughs> that trouble comes from, that problem comes from me. I am the source. Don't blame your parents. <laughs> I am the source. So may we be the first be the good source for our children. But coming back to this science of bearing fruit. What is a lie versus what is truth? When the when the farmer gives the son water and soil the plant the tree if, it's, if, if it still doesn't produce fruit, just like in Jesus' parable, it's lying. That's a, that's a lie. God has given us grace, the word, Holy Spirit, and blessings. If we are still not fruitful in our life, that's a lie. You are a liar. No? Right? If we eat, we need to have some strength. But even if we eat a lot and don't have strength, you're a liar. Unless you're sick. Something's wrong. Something is wrong. A cow, when it has a baby, it's supposed to have a calf. Not a puppy. If a cow gives birth and it's a puppy, that's a lie. True or false? Your eyes are like, when is it going to be done? I'm done. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> because you're not responding. If a human being gives birth, it needs to be a human being baby. Right? So what are you? Who's your father? Who's your father? Are you not sure? <laughs> the devil or God? God, right? Let's finish, come on. I want to finish too. God or the devil? God. God. Then, who are you? What kind of fruit are you going to bear? What kind of words are you going to speak? So, 
Let us not be liars. But I pray that we may receive the blessing of the land, blessing of the seed, both spiritually and physically. May we become part of that tree of life from today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting all the waters of darkness and waters of confusion and chaos and sinfulness move away so that dry land can appear. Father, we pray that that dry land in our hearts and our lives be a good soil, ready to receive your seed. And Father, help us to receive the seed that you give to us from you, our Father. And may we be able to bear fruits 100 times, 60 times, 30 times. And Father, may this blessing be given to all of Zion Church members, everyone who's worshiping today. Father, we pray that you will allow us to be fruitful, spiritually and physically and in numbers. And Father, in prosperity also. May we pray that your people will go out and bear many fruits of evangelism. And may our words become fruits of life. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give thanks to God. Thank you.